Hi, this is Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop in Seattle, Washington, and today I wanted to talk about Martin X Series guitars. Um, this is going to be an opinion video. I tend not to want to make a lot of opinion videos because, you know, they're opinions, everybody's got them. You know, they're like assholes, you know. Um, this is going to be a lot of my opinions as a repair person, um, which won't necessarily um, be the same as uh, the opinions of players uh, and folks out there who are actually like, you know, buying these guitars to, to use. So with all of that said, um, let me get into it. Um, so the Martin X series is a kind of a lower end series of Martin guitars uh, that uh, is sort of made to be in like the, uh, you know, six to, you know, six to a $700 range, I wanna say. Um, and these guitars are kind of unique to Martin's line and to Martin's history, uh, just because this is, uh, this is a type of guitar that has drifted from using actual wood in its construction. Um, these guitars are made out of high pressure laminate, um, which is um, you know, kind of the same stuff that you see on like uh, countertops, you know, in apartments or something. Like it's like that, you know, that, that stuff that kind of flakes off if you grip it, you know, it's usually kind of glued down over MDF, um, you know, medium density fiberboard, um, you know, it usually has like a marble print on it. Um, sometimes you'll see like, you know, fake tile or, or something like that. It's plastic, basically. It's like a fibrous, um, you know, pressed material with resin and other stuff in it, but it's not wood. When you look at these guitars, you can immediately tell if you know what you're looking at, just because this wood grain is printed on and it's very clearly printed on. This looks like, um, you know, if you had those uh, big long tables at your school that had like the fake wood grain on it and like you could look down on it and you could kind of like see the little, the little dots where the print was made. It's the same kind of thing that you see here. And you can also turn this over and on the corner, you can actually see the edge of the high pressure laminate. Um, in this guitar's case, this guitar actually has a soundboard as well that's made of high pressure laminate, though most of the X-Series guitars that I've gotten here in the shop have had, you know, real wood tops, um, you know, on, you know, high pressure laminate back and sides. Um, high pressure laminate is also what you'll see used um, on the headstock. Um, and, you know, again, if you turn this over and look at the side, you'll be able to see kind of the black edge of that high pressure laminate. And again, if you look at the print real carefully, you'll be able to see. Yeah. The fingerboards on these guitars are usually made of, uh, you know, rosewood. Um, and, uh, you know, they're going to have like not so fancy inlays on them if they have inlays at all. Like this one just has the side dots, just nothing on top. Anyway, let's get into my stuff that I have to say about these guitars. So number one, um, I'm going to tell you my biggest issue. And my biggest issue is this. Um, if you ding these guitars almost, you know, at all, this is the thing that kind of happens is that you'll see this side um, separation from the back or from the soundboard. Um, in the case of these, you know, when they're, when it's the back separating from the uh, sides, like this is, you know, usually something that's a fairly contained um, sort of break. Like this usually kind of keeps to itself. It may separate further up and down that, that glue seam, but it's gonna, you know, it's not gonna damage the material. The material itself is really resilient. It's gonna, it's gonna be tough and be able to, um, you know, not tear itself apart just because it's not glued together. Um, where we run into real problems with that separation is on soundboards that are made of real wood because what will happen is, is that you'll get a separation that maybe goes from here to here and then right at the edge there you'll see a crack start to form where that uh, you know portion that's still glued down meets that portion that's no longer glued down and you'll see a crack form and then you've got to go in and you've got to fix a crack. Sometimes that stuff can lead to braces coming loose or other issues um, but primarily like the biggest Biggest irritation I have with these is just this one seam here, this this you know top to top to sides and back to sides. I don't know what kind of glue they use, to be honest. Um, all I know is that um, I have gotten this repair in um, perhaps more than any other repair on any Martin guitar. 
uh, it's always these X series guitars and it's always the same thing. Like they've always taken it, they've taken an impact. They've been set too, set down too hard on a floor, um, you know, and you know, this is the kind of thing that happens as a result. It's just that these let go and they become unglued and then I've got to go in and I've got to re-glue them. I've done so many of these at this point that like I've got a procedure down for just, you know, when this comes in, cause this is just so common to see. Um, again, I don't know what kind of glue they're using, um, but maybe, I don't know if somebody from Martin is watching this, maybe you want to re-explore what you're using. Um, generally speaking, if you're going like, you know, to a material that's not wood, like this high pressure laminate stuff, I would maybe think about using something that isn't meant for wood, maybe, um, you know. I'm I'm not there. I'm not at your factory. I don't I don't necessarily have a whole lot of feedback to go on, except for that I know that when I worked for Rain Song Guitars, we didn't use glue that wasn't meant to go on carbon fiber because our guitars are made out of carbon fiber. So like wood glue had no place in that factory because none of the things that we were gluing up were going to be you know wood to wood joints. So you know. We used epoxy, which is not necessarily the best thing to use for um, guitars that are meant to get repaired. I don't know if I'd recommend that in this case, because like a carbon fiber guitar, you're probably never going to have to get in there and do anything to it, because it's just not going to—it's not going to move. It's you know really hard to break anything in that guitar. Um, you know, in this case, this stuff might move. This stuff might break, and so like I don't know if epoxy would be the best thing, but maybe something other than just like you know alphatic resin, you know, yellow, yellow wood glue would be the thing to use here. Uh, now, when I glue these here, um, I do use alphatic resin because that looks to me like what's being used here in this joint. Um, I have a special way that I clamp these, um, and some things that I do to kind of help keep this joint in place after I do that repair. And when I do these repairs, I don't tend to get the guitars back. Um, so, you know, whatever I'm doing is, is, is working on these. Um, and, you know, basically what it comes down to is that I, I clamp these very, you know, kind of loosely and I leave a lot of space in there for that glue to kind of fill in and, and, and create kind of a, uh, kind of a, a, <sighs> Uh, I don't want to say a gappy joint because that kind of leads to the wrong sort of conclusion, but a little bit of space um, for that glue to exist um, that may be more than we use in a, in a straight glue joint, um, wood to wood. So that's my big beef with these is, is this separation. And, uh, you know, I think we've covered that. Um, I want to kind of go into one of the other things that I see from these guitars, and this is I'm doing this video because this guitar has everything going on in it that I see in these X-Series. And that's this kind of thing. This is a hole that's been punched through the side. And I see this an awful lot on these guitars. It'll be either something like this or it'll be like a, a, a big nasty crack that kind of goes through and looks kind of like broken glass. And, it, you know, it doesn't crack like wood. It, it cracks like you know, high pressure laminate. And so getting in there and fixing that stuff is really hard to do. Since it's not wood, I can't really cut a wood patch and just go in here and repair that. This is, this is Mike, this is, this is like tens of thousands of inches thick, this, this die on here that, that creates this print. And so if you go in here and you try to do any sanding at all to get like a little wood plug flush with that, you're going to go right through that print and you're going to you're going to see it and it's going to go th down through to some other thing that's either like black or brown or whatever, but it'll look awful. Um, so like when I get these things in and they have these holes punched through them, you know, if there's material for me to work with there, um, I can do a fix to this that's not anything related to a wood fix. Um, I will use kind of a more carbon fibery repair. I will get some, um, get some fibrous material and I'll impregnate it with resin and I'll slip that in there and kind of put it against that material after I flattened it out the best that I could and gotten it to lay as best as I could. And that fibrous material will end up backing that break and, uh, you know, prevent that hole from, you know, becoming bigger or chipping away or anything like that. But it's not an ideal solution. Like, um, this, this kind of thing is just real unfortunate because there's just not a whole lot of great options for repairing it when it goes through like this and I have pieces missing because there's nothing here for me to there's nothing here for me to repair. That's just a hole. Um, and it's a hole in this material that 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 isn't wood 
that uh, has like layers to it that I can't sand. It, it uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a trip. I can get in here and I can do something that looks a little nicer. Like we can put a little bit of backing back here, and we can you know maybe put in some kind of epoxy putty that's brown. It'll match the color a little bit better. Um, you know, if you want to get really crazy about it, you could go in there and you could try drawing some wood grain on it, but it's going to be visible. There's nothing you can do to make this repair look good. And um, the way that this um, high pressure laminate tends to break is it tends to get, you know, punches through it. So like if you hit this with like a hammer or a screwdriver or something, it'll go through and it'll, it'll make a hole like that um, as opposed to like creating a crack you know, like it would on a wood guitar where you could just go in and you could cleat the crack and you could fix it and then do a little bit of finish touch up and in some cases make it basically invisible. Um, there's no way to do that on this guitar. Um, yeah, something else that you'll notice on here is just that this this uh, rosette was a decal and it's really common to see on very, very, very cheap student guitars. Like I'm talking like guitars like down in like the Esteban you know, guitar territory where like, you know, maybe a sticker or something that's over it that that's kind of like, you know, got some, you know, that iridescent sort of holographic stuff going on instead of like, you know, real mother of pearl. Cause like even I, I have a Johnson at home that I bought when I was like 14. And even that guitar has a real rosette that's been routed into the top and, you know, placed in and as an inlay, um, you know, to see something like this on a Martin makes me kind of sad because this is just, in my opinion, not the way that this is done. Um, you know, this would look better to me if it didn't have the rosette at all. Um, the fact that it has this sticker on there is kind of upsetting to me because uh, this is going to come off with enough, you know, expose this to the wrong thing. Um, you rub it hard enough, um, you know, do whatever happened here and, and, and the stuff just comes off. It looks like to me just by where the rosette is versus where the rosette isn't that this has probably just been played off. Um, probably, you know, somebody's finger brushing against it or a pick, um, you know, and the stuff that stayed on was the stuff that's underneath the strings. So, yeah, not a, not a huge fan of those. Um, something else, too, that um, isn't necessarily specific to these guitars, but it's kind of specific to a lot of newer Martins, is that um, this guitar has a nylon nut, and uh, while nylon is definitely not the worst plastic that you could make a nut out of, it's not the best either. Um, it has good, it has a, 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 a decent amount of slip to it, and so like when you're tuning, you know, this is not going to grip the strings perhaps as much as some of the other materials on the market, but um, you know, I don't, I don't really think that that's doing much for tone, and um, there are definitely better things that you could use if, um, you know, you're trying to look for that, uh, you know, that friction coefficient, you know, where you're able to tune the strings and the strings go through the nut real easily. Um, like even the way that I carve bone nuts works better than these. Um, these are also a little harder to remove than uh, some of Martin's other nuts. And that's primarily my main irritation with these is that when these come in, um, whether it's the X-Series guitars or whether it's one of their, you know, newer, you know, kind of lower-end guitars or mid-range guitars, like, they'll have one of these nuts on there and I'm supposed to remove it and replace it with a bone nut. Um, some nut, you know, some nuts are easier to remove than others. Um, these nuts are on kind of on the harder end of things to remove. And, um, you know, these don't need to be in there with, like, a whole lot of glue, um, or anything. These just, you know, when I, when I glue nuts in, it's just like a tiny little drop of super glue on like a toothpick that I put down just enough to hold it in place. Cause the string tension is going to hold it down for the most part. It doesn't need to be like glued rock solid in there. It's not like a structural joint that's, you know, if it fails, like the entire guitar breaks, you know, especially when they're not, when there are no strings on the thing. Um, I don't necessarily have an issue with the hardware. Um, the, Saddles that these tend to have are uh, tusk or new bone or whatever. It's, you know, a decent um, plastic bone substitute. Like if you're going to have to use a plastic bone substitute. And the tuners are pretty decent too. Um, I don't know if these are Godos or Grovers or whatever, but they're, they're quality. I haven't seen any with broken tuners yet. And uh, I've been doing this for a while. Um, I will say that the fret work on these tends to be a little bit iffy in a lot of cases. Um... Martin does a great job with frets. Um, you know, if you're buying like a D28, the frets on that guitar are probably going to be pretty, pretty great. 
Um, but on these guys, um, I will see occasional raised frets, um, things that aren't quite level, you know, things that aren't quite seated correctly, you know, things like that. Um, and, uh, you know, those do create playability issues for players. I have done a number of level crown polishes on these guitars when they were fairly new. And it's because, like, we'll get into doing the setup on it and, you know, we'll set the action down, you know, where it should be. And then we end up with buzz. And, you know, that's a result of, you know, high frets and stuff like you like that usually. Um, getting into some other stuff um, regarding the neck. Um, see. Um, when you turn this guitar over, uh, one of the other things that's noteworthy is that the uh, necks are made out of kind of like this glued together scrap wood. I'm not exactly sure what the story is here, whether this is stuff that they had, you know, laying around that they wanted to use and they kind of glued it up. Um, I don't necessarily have a problem with this design here. Um, you know, having these vertical strips of wood in a neck, um, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's probably easier to do this out of uh, materials that are, um, you know, a little bit more sustainable. So I don't necessarily have an issue with this. Um, may not look as pretty, but uh, I don't know if it's the particular materials they use for these slabs that they glue together. Um, but one thing that I'll notice about these is that the decks on these guitars do tend to move around a little bit more than I see on the, you know, one piece, you know, mahogany neck Martins, just because I, I don't know why, but um, when I set the relief on one of these guitars, even if I, even if I go in there and I flex it a lot and, and uh, you know, move it around, the relief on this guitar will tend to drift a lot quicker than the relief on something that's, you know, got a mahogany neck, and I don't exactly know why. I, for, to me, as like somebody who has done, you know, a lot of, you know, luthery and a lot of woodworking, you know, I look at this and I'm seeing all these vertical strips and I'm going, okay, well, you know, if you're going to make something that's stiff and strong, you know, this is the way that you do it, especially if those strips are glued in in the direction to resist the force that's going to be applied, and that's the case with this. So I don't know exactly what's going on there, um, but that's, in my experience, that's that's something that these guitars do, is that you'll set the neck relief and then it'll move, and I don't know why. Um, to me, this looks like it should be something that doesn't move, but it does. So, you know, do with that information what you will. If somebody's able to explain that to me, leave it down in the comments. I, it may be just that this is some kind of softer wood. I don't know. Um, it's this may not be. A, it's hard to tell, you know, in strips this small, and it almost looks like different kinds of woods are being used. Like this one here looks like it might be mahogany. This one here looks like it might be, you know, something else. This one over here looks like it might be something else. I don't know, um, but I do know that um, I do know that these necks move around a little bit. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so that's kind of my spiel on these guitars, and um, this video ran a little bit longer than I meant to do, but there's a lot to talk about here. Um, as far as like whether or not I'd recommend these guitars, um, you know, if you find one that you that you really like and it's within your price point and you just really, really want to have a Martin, particularly if it's one of the ones that has a solid soundboard, go for it. You know, it may be a great guitar for you. Like a lot of the things that I talk about on this channel, um, the complaints that I have are pretty specific to my line of work. I get these in when they're broken. Most players have them in their hands when they're when they're working. Um, and I don't know necessarily that the amount of guitars that I see come in here with this particular issue is representative of like the number of these guitars that that actually happens to. Um, but I do know that when these guitars come in, they have a very specific set of issues that are only common to this kind of Martin. Uh, Martin guitars in general, I love them to death. They are great guitars. They are reliable. They are really easy to work on. Um, they tend to be very predictable on the bench, very predictable with setups. They sound wonderful. Um, these guitars also have the capability of sounding wonderful. It's just the way that these break is very particular and in some cases harder to fix than something like a D28 or you know whatever it is that you're looking at. Um, so again, don't necessarily want to talk anybody about out of buying one of these guitars, but if you do, um, this is a video that maybe will help you make a more educated choice um, regarding that. This has been Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop in Seattle, Washington. If you like this video and you found it helpful, you can kick me a few bucks on Ko-fi or uh, Patreon. There are just links in the description. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Um, link to your friends if you got friends that are into this kind of thing in the description you'll also find a link to my reverb page where i sell some instruments 
and uh, some other stuff. And you'll also see a link to my website that has the, my contact information, my price uh, list for repairs, as well as a page that I wrote up on caring for stringed instruments. And if you're here watching this video, I'm going to guess that you might have a few stringed instruments laying around the house that you're caring for. So that might, page might have something for you. Anyway, um, this has been Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop in Seattle, Washington. Thanks for watching.